Yo guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to give you guys a quick and in-depth look at the brand new Yeezy, the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2, and the all new Lumbar Colorway. Okay, so to start off, the Adidas Yeezy Boost in the Lumbar Colorway was actually part of a regional exclusive Yeezy release. So this colorway right here released in the North and South Americas. Now the people in Europe got a different colorway which was named the Aunt Leah colorway which was like a yellowish um, Yeezy with the static pattern and the people in Asia got a synth colorway which was basically the same shoe but in kind of a pinkish colorway and it was really nice. Now if you really want this shoe it is currently sold out for a retail price but if you really want it you could always pay resale because at the time of this video there's pretty much no resale value on these shoes they're going for 275 to 350 and it all depends on what size you are. Now, right now I have a size 9.5 and, and even this one is going for around 320 which basically means that the shoe um, has almost no resale value. You might be able to make maybe 50 bucks on one pair, but if you actually want to make money, you would have to get a lot of pairs. Now, if you really wanted to resell the shoe, there was actually another version of the same exact shoe, and that was the Yeezy Boost Lumbar Reflective. Now, that was basically the same exact shoe as this one right here, the only difference being that the Lumbar Reflective actually has 3M woven all over the upper, so when you shine a flashlight on it, the entire upper pattern is reflective, which is really cool. Now, that shoe had the same retail price, but was way more limited. I heard there were only three to 4,000 pairs made, and because of that, the resale prices of the reflective version of the same, the same exact shoe is hovering around $1,000 to $1,200 once again depending on your size which is really crazy because um, what Kanye and Adidas are trying to do is they're trying to make the Yeezy more available to everyone while at the same time having appeal to the resellers and the way they're doing that is they're actually making two different versions of the same exact shoe and we've seen this for past five or six releases where you have a regular version which is more available to the public and a reflective version which is a lot more limited. Um, so if you're a reseller, you probably went for the, re the reflective pair. Now I personally did also go for the reflective pair, but those are extremely limited, so I took an L on that. All right, so to jump off into the review of the shoe itself, here is the Lumar in some good lighting to show you guys. I will have some B-roll on top of this video to show you guys a better in-depth look at the shoe. Um, to start off, the shoe really represents two different Yeezy models that we've seen um, so far, and that is the Static and the Sesame colorways. Now the reason I say that this shoe is really similar to the Static and Sesame is because the overall um, look and pattern of the shoe is nearly identical to the Statics, but the colorway and the tone itself is more closer to the Sesame's. If you take a look at the shoe itself, the shoe actually has the same exact pattern that we've seen that started on the static colorway of the 350 V2. Um, that's present in the transparent stripe, as well as the overall zigzag pattern on the upper. And of course, we have the row places that are reflective once again. So if you shine any light on this, it should reflect, which is very nice. They didn't do that for the past regional exclusive release, but I am glad that they brought it back for this one because it looks very nice. Now, um, the only difference I would say that this shoe has uh, besides the other 350 V2s that we've seen released so far is the absence of the pull tab. Now, as you can see on the back, other 350 V2s, all the other ones we've seen so far except for the first four had a pull tab in the back and honestly, I, I don't think it really served much function because when I was putting on the shoe, I would usually find myself grabbing over here because it was way more easier. So I guess that might be why they took it out. Now, I do have another theory, and my theory is that Kanye is preparing for the Yeezy 350 V3 release, um, and he's probably going to end this silhouette the way they started without the pull tab. Now, that's just a theory. It's probably not true. I think they're going to go what they did with the 700s by having two versions of the same exact shoe coexist. Um, but yeah, so that's the shoe overall. Now, the reason that I say this is close to the Sesame's as well as the Statics is because the overall tone of the shoe is extremely close to the sesame colorway. Now if you remember, the sesame colorway was like a cream, light brownish tone. And this shoe has pretty much the exact same um, color tone. As you can see the midsole, we have a very like dark cream, almost brownish sort of colorway. And on the back for the um, outsole, we have a little darker brown. Now the overall knit of this shoe is made up of two colors. It's a cream color and a gray color. So if you take a look, um, it, it has, the base of the shoe is a cream color and then the pattern is woven in a gray color and the row places are also in the same colorway. Now I really feel that this shoe has no resale value for two reasons. 
First one being that the 350v2 market is really oversaturated right now and the second reason being that this shoe is way too similar to the previous releases we've gotten. If you had a sesame or a static, you probably did not go for this shoe and I think that makes sense just because the shoe is just too similar overall to those two colorways and it really be, wouldn't be worth it to spend another $220 just to get this shoe. Now I personally sold my statics and sesames previously and I did want the sesames back and I'm really glad that they released this because I wouldn't have to pay a resale price for the sesames. I was actually able to get two pairs of this for retail on adidas.com. Um, so yeah, that was pretty much it for the review on the shoe. If you guys have any questions or anything you'd like to know regarding the sizing, I will put sizing info on the on foot which is about to come. But you could always leave a comment or um, question in the comments below and I will try to answer them. But that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed or found this review helpful, please don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing because it really helps me out. We just hit 200 subscribers which is completely amazing. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.